of them is what we're talking about this morning. 0845 300 8181. Uh, text the show on 81333 to start with the letters HW. Uh, earlier on, we spoke to Marge. Uh, Marge is in Malvern, and she told us how her husband's pacemaker works and also how it's benefited him. It's a rather complex thing, really. There's like three wires that are inserted um, into the heart and uh, around the heart. And um, it gives him, um, if his heart goes into a sort of bit of a failure, it kicks in and uh, helps him. And, and how was his life before he had it? A bit grim. A bit grim. He was really ill. And this really helped. Now, um, at, at the end of uh, life, of course, they have to be removed. And at the moment, they're treated as clinical waste. Some of them do go abroad, though. Uh, Pace for Life is a charity uh, that says up to two million people around the world die because they can't afford pacemakers. So what they do is uh, they send some abroad. But a lot of them, a lot of ones in this country, uh, just go and become clinical waste. They're basically thrown away. They're destroyed. Um, but we thought we need to find out more about this, exactly what they do, how they work, how they benefit people. Uh, let's go and speak to Trudy Loban, who's the founder and director of the Arrhythmia Alliance, the Heart Rhythm Charity, for a bit of a, a back-to-basics guide on pacemakers. Morning, Trudy. Good morning. Good to speak to you. Thanks ever so much for coming on and, oh, I like I said, giving us a back to basics guide. Just, just let's go back to the very beginning. What exactly is a pacemaker? It uh, regulates your heart rhythm. So it's a small little generator about the size of a 50 pence piece. It's inserted up under your collarbone normally, uh, sometimes under the arm. And then it can have uh, one or two wires that lead to the heart and it regulates the heart because some people have a heart rate that is too fast or too slow or irregular. So it, it's regulating and often it's not even working, but then when your heart goes out of sync, it gets it back into rhythm. So it just so sometimes it's not even on, it just sits there dormantly monitoring the heart. And some if that, people, if, and if yeah. The, yeah. And if the heart suddenly goes into a, a slightly unusual rhythm or pattern, it will then kick in and do what it does. And it's electrical, isn't it? It just provides yes. it provides an electrical impulse to the heart. Is that right? That's right. It's a, a little generator. We have, the heart has its own natural pacemaker, but, you know, just like in a car engine, sometimes the timing's out, it needs fine-tuning, and basically that's what the pacemaker is doing, keeping the heart regular. And is that what arrhythmia is? Is that a problem with your heart rhythm? Yes, absolutely. That's the name of the condition, yes? Yeah, so, uh, well, there are, sev- there are several conditions, all coming under arrhythmia, and arrhythmia means um, an irregular, too fast or too slow heart rhythm. And is that common, Trudy? Is it, do, do many it's, people have it? It's very, very common. Um, it, over two million people suffer with various arrhythmias. Some, you know, we all suffer palpitations at times, Well, that's a very, very mild arrhythmia. Or we hear of people dropping dead suddenly, or in the case of Fabrice Muamba, he mm. was miraculously survived and he went on to have a particular type of pacemaker an ICD an implantable cardiac defibrillator which shocks the heart if it goes into a specific rhythm which is potentially fatal then you need this ICD which will shock the heart back into rhythm and we've all seen um, you know on, on TV hospital programs when an external defibrillator is used in a stand clear and they bring on the paddles um, and that that shocks the heart back into to life. Well, it's it's one of those, but tiny inside you, you know, your yeah. own personal um, defibrillator or pacemaker. And these things are completely internal. Then you couldn't, if you couldn't, by looking at someone apart from like maybe a small scar, you couldn't tell that they had one. Absolutely not. No, very very tiny small scar because the the little generator just fits in a pocket under the the skin. And how much is one of these, Trudy? Roughly. Well, it, it varies because um, pacemakers, are, you know, if you only need it to regulate occasionally or if you have a complex arrhythmia, so it can vary from around £10,000 to over £20,000. Really? That much money? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, so they are life-saving pieces oh, of equipment. Totally. And, 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 and would, uh, someone can just live, I mean, once, once you've got one of these things, is there anything you can and can't do? Can you just live a totally normal life? You live a totally normal life. It's advised that you don't do contact sports such as rugby or those sorts of things in case somebody headbutts you in the chest and dislodges a wire or something. But, you know, for the majority of us, it means that it actually gives you back a quality of life 
and you can get on with life and work, you know, and, and yeah, be normal again rather than being breathless or tired or walking around with a potentially fatal heart rhythm. And an utterly stupid question, can you still go on roller coasters? Because you always see that sign, don't you? No pregnant ladies, no, no one with a pacemaker. Well, um... You can, <laughs> but it's like going through, uh, when you go through the x-ray machine at the airport. Oh yeah, that's another one, yeah. Well, how, yeah. How's that work? Well, it's in case, well, each, each individual's pacemaker is set to, to suit them. So if you go anywhere where there's a magnetic field or whatever, it may uh, alter the settings. Of course. So it's advisable not to, you know, if you're going through the airport, they just ask you to step round and then they just give you a body search and set instead. So it's not that you can't do it, it's just advisable not just to be, do just it. Just be a little bit careful with a few things. Yeah. Just hang yeah. on there, Trudy. I'm going to bring in Gordon. Gordon's in staff. Oh, hi, Gordon. Good morning, Elliot. Uh, you, you've had some major heart problems. Talk, talk us through what you've had wrong with you. Yeah, well, actually, in uh, June 12, I had a heart attack and uh, picked up by par paramedics and taken to Worcester, uh, where they fitted a stent. And while they were fitting a stent, I had heart failure. Mm. And this caused a few problems with all the electrics in the heart. And everything was going haywire. They wired me up and got me through that. Then I had two cardiac arrests, which they got me around again. And Dr. Trevelyan of the cardiac team in Worcester was absolutely fantastic. He said, not to worry, we get him, get him sorted out. We'll send you to Coventry and have a pacemaker with a defibrillator fitted because we're frightened in case you have another heart, heart failure. Gordon, do, do me a favour, just very quickly, reach over and turn your radio down because you, 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 you beep, you, you're oh. going, yeah, you go, woo, a little bit. <laughs> Done that? Yep, Fab fabulous. There we are. We can, we can crack on now. So, um, so you've got one of these things that Trudy was talking about. This is one of those. So it's got a, it, you've got your own personal defibrillator in. You. Yes, I have. So and and when when I was t when I when I went to Coventry to have it fitted, uh, the, the price quoted there was about fifteen thousand, and the life expectancy of that particular unit was between t ten and twelve years. Brilliant. So, and and, it, and how's your life now? Now you've had it. You've just got to take your time and do what, do what, do what you want. But uh, as normal, I eat well, I uh, do exercise, everything I do normally. And I suppose, you, do you feel a little bit sort of safer knowing now that you've got this in you and if, any, if the worst happens, it, it's there to help you? Oh, yes. That must be I a mean, real bit, bit of peace of mind. Grace because um, as they said at the hospital, if your heart does uh, fail, you'll suddenly get a massive shock which will knock you on the floor and you'll know you've had a, a, another heart attack. But I haven't experienced that, thank God. And let's hope you don't. I hope I don't. <laughs> That's going to ruin your day, isn't it, God? <laughs> It'll make you think twice. Absolutely. Uh, would you mind if yours was reused when you no longer need it? Would you mind if it went to someone else? Oh, no. I, I, I totally agree with it being reused. Because if it's, it's, if it's there to save someone else's life, then... You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, this is a great speech, you got. Let's just bring Trudy back. Hi, Trudy. Why, why aren't they recycled at the moment? It does seem absolutely crazy that they're not. Well, um, they've only fairly recently been recycled in poorer countries where they can't afford them. And there is uh, an organisation we're involved in, Heartbeat International, which not only... Re uh, it, they often use off-the-shelf pacemakers that are near um, nearer their expiry date. Um, a lot of it is because, again, it's going to be the removal of the pacemaker. Uh, if, if you're going to be cremated, you have to have any uh, device removed anyway, but if you're being buried, it normally stays in place. Oh, um, does it? So even, even though there's like batteries and, and oh, there's lithium in batteries, aren't there? I didn't think you were allowed to bury that. I thought it all had to come out. Well, if you're being buried, it's normally staying in place, but definitely if you're being cremated, it, it, does, it is removed. So you have to outweigh the cost of it being removed uh, versus and, and how long um, battery life it may have left in it. Now, as, as new devices are coming to market, they are lasting up to 10 years, whereas a few years ago, they were only lasting perhaps four or five years. So it wasn't worthwhile recycling them. But yes, if, if there's still several years of life left in the battery, then it is something that may be worth considering, but it has to be offset against the cost of 
removing these from the deceased person. Can't you just put a new battery in them, Trudy? You have a new generator. Because you, you, know, you, you can't just take them out and replace it with a battery. You take the little, ge- you can leave the leads in and they take the, the generator, the little 50 pence piece uh, size generator mm. and put a new one in. So it's not like changing the batteries on a torch then? No, no, not quite. <laughs> this is a, see. This is what I mean, Trudy. I think you know we, we all we all it's say pacemakers, but we're, but no, but that's the thing, isn't it? With all you know, I think I think what the the public perception and idiots like me, our perception of, of, of general generally what things are and actually where they are at. Certainly, very high tech, cutting edge things like many medical things are. I think it's a bit of a disconnect. We don't quite understand. That's why we're talking no, to you, I mean, Trudy. Pacemakers are mini computers. And when you go along to see your arrhythmia nurse and they take readings and they set them to suit you, it's all done almost like holding the mouse from your um, computer over near your body and it adjusts them that way. Most of the pacemakers nowadays can download data and send back to the hospitals remotely, thereby saving visits to the hospital, cutting down on clinic time, freeing up time for more patients to be seen. Um, and you can just get on with your your life. So there's, or if there's, you have any concerns, you can just phone your clinic and they can tell you to download it. Wow. Um, you so know, there's, so there's, there's almost... a complicated piece of equipment. There's almost an app for that then, is there? Almost, yes. <laughs> but it's, you know, it, it's high-tech, yeah. life-saving equipment. But yes, if they can be reused, then they should be. But it's not as straightforward as just... Well, do you know what? It's been absolutely enlightening talking to you, Trudy. It's you know what? I sit here and I bang on, and it's good to get an expert on who who bangs on in a qualified way. <laughs> well, thank you. That explains. If, if anyone would like to know more about pacemakers or heart rhythm disorders, then please go to our website, heartrhythmcharity.org.uk, or give us a call. Fantastic. Uh, really good to speak to you, Trudy. Thank you ever so much for, for explaining it so uh, so amazingly simply, so even someone like me can understand. Have, <laughs> a, good, have a good day. There we are. That's Tru- Trudy Loban uh, from the Arrhythmia Alliance. Uh, that's the uh, the Heart Rhythm Charity, and she explained that amazingly well. Really good. If you want to find out more, here's that website again: heartrhythmcharity.org.uk. Uh, Trudy's the founder and director. That's a Heart 